Welcome to our Halloween episode. Finally, it has have come. It ha- it has come. Ed. This this one drops hot on Halloween. It's so, really- <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. So it only made sense that uh, for the whole episode, we're just going to talk about John Carpenter's Halloween. We don't got time to waste on other shit today. We really yeah, don't. Get, yeah, get out of here, box office prediction. Jigsaw made, I don't know, $19 million? Twelve d thousands millions? I don't know. You know, now I'm actually curious. It made 16 That seems low. Yikes. Bottom you know, of the barrel. You know, you know what also wasn't a financial success? John Carpenter's Halloween. Are you Didn't sh- do well. You sure? Not initially. Not initially. Well, what's initially? Like the first weekend? First like month or two because they did uh, the road show. That's how, yeah. I mean, it was, it wasn't like widely released. And like, and the reviews were bad. Everything was, everything was bad. And then suddenly, 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 when it starts making millions of dollars, the reviews turned around. Like, oh, this is brilliant what he's doing here. Oh, people like it. I love it too. I wonder what um, what's that fat one's name? Roger Ebert. Roger he Ebert. It. Did he? he? Yeah, it was one of his, he said it was one of the best films of the year. Four stars. Good. Yep. I'm glad he did that. I'm glad he did that. Now, throughout this uh, episode, I'm going to sprinkle in some trivia. Um, John Carpenter's Halloween. That's what it's called, Jim. Now, here, I am going to tell you this. I purposely. Did not watch this movie. Here's why. Halloween... Because you hate me. Halloween is in the heart, Jack. Wherever I go, she's with me. And when I found out that you had some trivia, I wanted to make it fair. And I've seen this movie 700,000 times. So... Mm -hmm. Well, this isn't going to be like, what color was his jumpsuit? Well, I I figured it wouldn't be like that. But... I wanted to have a, a historical perspective because I grew up with this movie. It's part of my soul. Right. You saw it when, at first when you were four years old. No, when did you see it? The first time, the first time I saw the first movie um, all the way through, I was 11. That's, the, that's a good age. I was 11. Funny story. I think I've told this on the old show, but I will briefly tell it here. The video store that used to be by our house, Star Video, Mm. the copy that they had, the copy that I'd seen, you know, many times before I realized what was going on, was the TV edit. So the first, I don't know, 20 times I saw the movie, I saw not a titty. I saw no marijuana smoking in the car. I saw an extra scene in the beginning with Dr. Loomis. Hey. I saw an extra scene with Laurie Strode in a bathrobe. Ooh. And uh, the word, the, no swearing. The, the line, Lonnie, get your ass away from there, was get yourself away from there. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Ass? Yes. Well, it was on it's TV like, it's in the like 70s. It's like, Lonnie, get the fuck out of here, yeah. you dick. Lonnie, your mom's a wretched cunt. <laughs> Which she um, might be. We don't know. So you saw the TV version. Yes. What's the extra Loomis scene? There is an extra scene in the beginning where uh, Dr. Loomis is, is appears before the board, before like the, the panel. Oh. And he's like, look, you can't. You got to get him to maximum security. He's like, there's nothing in there. This thing has no soul. Uh you can't ever let him out. And it was a scene that they added for TV, but it they they wanted to add a scene that sort of set up uh, Doctor Loomis's sort of obsession with this patient and uh, in his set up him warning everybody about this patient. Oh god! So he, they like blacked his beard out, like made him look younger. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like a young Doctor Loomis. It sounds like it's he's got terrible. a turtleneck on and like a corduroy jacket or something. All right, I have to look at it. Dr. Loomis, deleted <laughs> scene. <laughs> what you said, turtleneck. I said, all right, show me. Um, just show me an image of it. 
did it look cheap? Did it look like it was, you know, like we have, we're just, we have to do this for TV. We have negative $5 to shoot it. No, no. It, it looked like part of the movie. Damn. Struggling to find it. That's unfortunate for me. My hunt, my hunt will continue. You know why? You know why? Because there's a lot of deleted scenes in all, a lot of the movies, especially six. And that's probably throwing off the uh, search engine optimization. Yeah. So okay, you want, yeah, the, the the marijuana. So they, they didn't cut mean off to get marijuana. it off track. I'm just saying. No, but that's fine. Yeah. So that was the version I, I grew up with. When I bought it, uh, when I was 12, I'm like, wait, okay. Here's another another thing. In the beginning, the very first scene, when he puts the mask down, they make the eyes of the mask even smaller, so you can't see the blood in the boobs on Judith Myers. Oh man, that's pretty clever. It was pretty clever, wasn't it? That's pretty clever. But honestly, they bring <laughs> it down to like a, yeah. it's like a PG movie, it's legit. And it's Coming still Halloween. This fall, it's, Michael Myers family reunion. Yeah, um, the Lori Strode scene is like a throwaway. Just her like getting out of the shower. The phone rings. Uh, something. She got a towel on her head. She gets a little scare. She yes. Um, I think someone comes over to borrow a like an item of clothing. Weird. That's weird. One thing that I thought uh, was interesting, as far as uh, the writing of Halloween, um, they wrote the scares first, essentially. What would be scary? This would be scary, and they kind of. Mm-hmm. What if it's wrote, not your boyfriend under the sheet? Yeah. What if it's not the boyfriend? What if you, the phone rings and who is that? You know, that's scary stuff. And then they kind of um, did it that way, which I, I thought uh, that's interesting. And that's probably pretty common. If you have an action movie, what stunts can we do? And what do we have? Let's look at the locations and uh, the, the, the values and assets that we have and yep. work around it. That's just that's a, it's a common practice. Makes sense. What can we afford? For something like this, where they're not going to spend all that much money anyway, they could have started story first, but they made sure that they were scares. And that's probably pretty important with a horror film. So good for them. Yeah. Um, I always thought it was interesting that when Deborah Hill would talk about them writing this movie and how it was sort of split up and, and John Carpenter handled the the limited backstory that was there with the occult stuff and uh, – uh, the Dr. Loomis scenes and that type of thing. And Deborah Hill yeah. handled all the, the girl talk. Yeah. From what, from what I gathered, it was, it was a judge just like that. Uh, she did the girl stuff. He did the Loomis stuff. Um, and I don't know. I, I just get the impression she did most of it because here's something I'm going to do that I never, ever do. I want to give a shout out to the, that producer Erwin Yablons, because a lot of this was his idea. Like he was like, "Hey, I got this idea. Hey, I got this idea. How let's call it Halloween. Hey, what if it's like the babysitters are getting killed? The babysitter it, murders. Yeah, like he had essentially like the core of the the story. That, and they took it, and made it their own, of course. But like that that was the origin of it. Was this producer? And then he was like, hey, well, "Halloween. What about Halloween?" And they were like, "Yeah, that's also pretty good. Let's we'll run with that as well." Thank you, Erwin. Uh, and like this guy, I just uh, I think I love him. He's that rare producer who like, helped the project instead of hindering it or being a money mark who got too involved. Not that I know anything about that, but this guy, like, he's like, "Here's an idea," and they're like, "All right, we'll do the creative things now." Thank you, Erwin. And like even when like the movie came out, very mixed reviews at first. And even when it started picking up steam, like we talked about, nobody distributed it. None of the big the big ballers wanted it. It was his fucking company. His he stepped up and said, "I'll distribute it with through a Compass International, my company, and we'll we'll do, we'll do it this way. It'll be small." And the sequels, you know, of course, would be the big dogs because the movie went on to do very well. But this fucking guy just fucking stepped up to the plate, and I, lo- I love him it. for that. Yeah, he believed Irwin. in it. And uh, it's it, it it changed 
movie making, I think, forever. It, it, it just it, it's, it, as far as genres, for sure. Yeah, it, didn't start, it started here with John Carpenter's Halloween. Now, wh- why was it called John Carpenter's Halloween, Jim? I'm sure you know this one. Oh. John Carpenter's Halloween. There was another movie called Halloween. There wasn't any movies called Halloween, Damn which it. blew their fucking minds when they were like, "Yeah, we'll we'll look into it," or when because I'm sure there's a fucking bunch oh, of them. Oh, I know, because he was going bald. What? That's not why. No, it's not that. Um, they they wanted to make a movie. He was coming off uh, assault on Precinct Thirteen. Um, I just I just call it assault. Oh, I'm sorry, the, I forgot the, we're, the cool kids just call it. I just call it, uh. uh but they're like, you know, there's value here. This we can get this guy to make a movie and it'll do well. Blah blah blah. And he's they said, how much do you need? Or the thing this was Irwin still. He said, how much do you need? And he's like, I can do it for three hundred thousand. And now for a lot of movies around this time, like the budget's still, you know four or five million at least yeah star and wars it, it, was it, a million yeah and it would it would be three hundred thousand a, a day on a lot of those films back then and he's just like i just have i have two requests to do you know we'll do we'll do it i'll do it for three hundred thousand here here's my terms one i get final cut two it's gonna say john carpenter's halloween we're putting my name on it and they were like yeah for three hundred thousand you sure fucking can dude let's see what you got and he did it. And he did it. And he Knocked did that it. Shit out the park. And he did it. And it's sort of, in a way, I always felt like, uh, not. I don't. When I think of John Carpenter esque movies, it's sort of like the least John Carpentery. You know, film. You know, style wise, not the musically. Obviously, his. You can't take his stamp off of anything, but. He's I mean, got a lot. The there's music, a lot more gunplay, a lot more action in his other movies, and this one is sort of low key. And yeah, not, not as uh, clever with the dialogue, the wit, the yeah. smart mouths. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 more subdued. And once again, I think a lot of that's probably going to go back to to the Deborah Hill. I think she did most of this. I'm sure he was very much up in those guts. The, the script, not Deborah Hill, which both, but. I I think from all my research, like sh- like when people talk about Star Wars, just people talk about uh, George Lucas's uh, ex wife or whatever, who was like the editor, and she pretty much saved that fucking movie from him uh, being an idiot. <laughs> she was and- like Padme, <laughs> and he's Anakin. <laughs> yeah, She's like don't put it on Tatooine, get it away from him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it seems like that was uh, the case here. No, obviously John Carpenter, I'm sure did. A whole hell of a lot, but when it comes to the script, it seems like Deborah Hill came to fucking play, and she was very good at it. And it kind of shows, like you said, this movie looks like John Carpenter. This movie sounds like John Carpenter. And then there's Halloween, which it's the least of them, like like you just said. And boy, were they were they were a good team. I would have loved to have seen a lot more movies uh, with that pair. What was the last one they did together? Was it The Fog or The Thing? No, The Thing was eighty. I want to say something like that. Was it Halloween 2? I think it might have been Halloween 2. Let me do a quick look here. Halloween 2. It, it, it does appear to be Halloween 2. Jesus. Which he famously Jesus. said that he only, got, he only managed to write that because he was drunk all the time. Something I'm paraphrasing, but... Well, they were like, "How did you go? How did you go about writing Halloween 2? And he's like, "With a lot of Budweiser." Escape from L.A. Uh, she has a writing credit for, but I don't think they were like a team at this point, right? For Escape from L.A. Yeah, I don't think so. Like they hadn't had a team up in a while. This was like, yeah, like what was the last Deborah Hill John Carpenter joint? Uh, yeah, it was, it was going to be Halloween two. <laughs> Halloween two, and then like a, a decade. Um, I haven't seen the fog in its entirety. I think that's something I'm gonna have to do. I love the soundtrack. I have the soundtrack on Spotify. It's really good. It's it's not bad. It's not one of my favorite ones, but it's because I love all of his other ones so much. Yeah, you know, Escape from New York, The Thing, 
Big Trouble in yeah. Little China is probably my favorite movie ever made. Yeah, but the score is really good. Halloween. And one day watch it. Halloween, uh, the score for Halloween. Uh, written in how many days? God, see, this trivia is, is sort of uh, behind the scenes related. Uh, the score for Halloween written in two days? Four. Mm. I'll do it in two. <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, it kind of, sh- like, people are like, he did it in four days. And I'm like, it took him four days, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's very simple, um, but it's good and it's powerful. And it sets it sets the scene. They were they did screenings um, to uh, executives when they're trying to get distribution. Like, here's our movie. Let's do the damn thing. And they fucking hated it. And they hated it because the, the music wasn't in there yet. And once they added that music, suddenly opinions started to change. Yeah, that it fucking is. Music. It is the most iconic horror movie theme, in my opinion. And then The Exorcist would be like second. Yeah. Can you just picture some of these Halloween scenes, the walking across the street, going upstairs, like with nothing there? Or Dog. something that was just generic as, and Not bad? The same. In, in the in the music cues you <sighs> to the intensity at the end. Like yeah. the music ramps it up. Yeah, that tempo dun, lets you know. Dun 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 dun. That's when that's when you know like oh shit's I serious. love that shit. Like a chicken just pecking at that keyboard. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Yeah, five four time signature, which is weird. You know, time yeah. signature for for anything. It's not typical. Do you think, do you think maybe that's why he did that to uh, make it stranger? Yeah, I think it was conscious. I think it was a conscious effort to just sort of make it uh, make it pop. It sort of makes you. Uh, anticipate you know you you get into that uh it sort of has like a rushed feel to it yeah yeah um it's great thing it's, it's, it's phenomenal it's, it's one of my favorite before i had seen the movie when i was mm, 4 years old my uncle had a little keyboard and i would sit there and play the theme on the keyboard even before i knew the movie I knew I knew about the movie, I knew about the character, and I knew the theme. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a fun one to learn. You just need there's three notes. You know? And uh it, yeah, it was a really fun one to learn and it's an iconic theme. Like it, it's not something where you're like, Hey, uh play that Hellraiser theme for me on the keyboard real quick. And you're like, Oh shit. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that movie's miss. That movie's missing. What about Phantasm? Does Phantasm have a good score or theme? Phantasm so has a lot of good music, but I can't. I I can't think of a hook. Yeah, but the music is cool. It's sort of out there, but the theme isn't as powerful and and catchy. You know, it's like the John Williams effect. You know, you just can hum his themes. The Halloween theme is good. Uh. Friday the Thirteenth has iconic music, but it's sort of like frenetic. It doesn't have like a strong melody like this. No, it's Nightmare just Elm attack, Street's good. Nightmare on Elm Street's up there. Yeah, but nothing's gonna dethrone the king. And I, I think that tells a bit of a story. All the successful ones, the ones we remember, the music, man, the music really fucking helps. You know, like Phanta- like Phantasm, or. Some of these other ones that were good but didn't really take off. If they had a great theme and a score, that could have helped them over a little bit of a hump. Yeah, maybe. Could have. Would have been nice. I loved going to uh, Six Flags Great America Fright Fest when I was around 10, 12, 13, something. And they had, um, they had this soundtrack just on repeat. Yep. And like the monsters would like chase you. They would stalk you. And it was the coolest fucking thing. I've ever experienced. It's I think o- I went to that with listener Dave. Yeah, I've been fun. to it a couple times in hearing the theme out in the dark like that with the monsters walking around. Sometimes you'll hear it in a haunted house. 
you know, like a Reaper's Realm, like one of those places. But it was yeah. just cooler at, at Fright Fest. Because you're out yeah. in the open, it just felt more atmospheric. And, like, there were always, like, little nooks, like, under this a bridge or something, where it was just a little bit darker. Mm-hmm. There, there was some trees, and it was just a little more claustrophobic. And there's that theme. And it was, it's like you're in a movie. Yeah, it was sort of lit, like you're out on the streets at night. Yeah. Oh, I used to go out on Halloween, dress up as Michael Myers. It was fantastic. Do you have a Michael Myers mask? I don't know where it is, but yes, I do have one. It was. Does uh, it? Does it? Look, is it on par with the movie, or is it on par with Part Four? No, no. It's it's the most of the molds you see are the Shatner mold. Don Post was like, "Yep, cashing on this real hard," <laughs> but mine was like beige and the hair was like brown like light brown hmm. so the colors were all out of whack I ended up painting it and like painting the hair and everything to make it look better the shit was whack the shit was whack but it was like a heavy thick rubber it was good but <clears throat> this movie is um, this franchise it started a, a, a trend in the 80s with this, this sort of the slasher genre right and yeah. yet and yet, the things that we associate with the slasher genre, the big body counts and the crazy death scenes and the gore and the blood, and there's not any of that in this. Very small body count. It's very intimate, and I think that's what makes it scary. Like, we've all been in Haddonfield, Illinois, mm-hmm. on Halloween. We've all been in one of those small towns, and when you think of the security and the safety of the small town... Uh, like middle America back then and how vulnerable they all were and had no idea something like this could happen. That's, that was the main, that was the main scare. I think that they cashed in on is like, this could be, this could be your house. This could be any town. This guy's not, this guy's not the devil. You know, this isn't the exorcist. There's nothing crazy going on here, but, but this could happen to you. And it's Halloween. Everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah. Ben, <laughs> fucking Ben Tramer. He had that mask on. It's very unlucky for for Ben. <laughs> yeah. He should have just. He should have been Lori that night. Although we know if he was, he did. They'd have killed him. They, he would have been fucking killed. But yeah, He's low body count. Way. Low body count. What is the body count in John Carpenter's Halloween? Oh, okay, so are we? Um, Including the dog. Ooh, okay. So we're looking at... The dog. I gotta count the dog. Bop, bop, <laughs> bop. Man, I want to say six? Body count is six. You got Judith, unnamed truck driver, mm-hmm. the dog, uh, Linda, Bob, and Annie. Annie. Now I watched this on the big screen recently. Give me I got a beer. See- Give me a beer. Yeah, I got. To- <laughs> <laughs> I got to see this on the big screen. It's recently. not perfect. What do you mean? The movie. Oh no, it's not. Um, uh, I got to see the the titties real big. I don't remember. Uh, everything's just bigger on that goddamn screen. Now the titties. I was like, oh, that's some, that's some nice titties. Judith Myers has some titties. Um, also. Got to see, um, just the the faces of these actors and actresses better than you can on a regular TV. I don't remember the actress who played Annie. She's very attractive. You when don't I think remember of Hall- her being that I, attractive? When, yeah, when I when I think of Halloween, I'm like, ooh, I could rub one out to Halloween. Ooh, uh. but now it shit on a lonely night. Annie's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. When did that? Oh, fuck! How did I miss that? She is. I agree with you. And she's uh, she's lonely. Mm-hmm. Oh, Paul. Yep. You're gonna deep dick me tonight. <laughs> <No> <laughs> I forgot keys. the keys. Yeah. Let me get the keys. Oh, the door's open now, but I'm singing so I don't notice. And I'm gonna Why go cross-eyed. <laughs> Why are the windows so foggy? I'm being choked. Look at that. Yeah, that cross-eyed death. 
That is that was some Tali Al Ghul shit. You could tell there's some one takers in here. Three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> like fifteen thousand. That's Donald Pleasance right there. He's, he's like, I'd love to do more takes, but I'm shooting this Doctor Loomis turtleneck scene, and we need some reels for that. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was terrible. And it's gonna. They went back you. and shot that. They like they added it. It wasn't like they cut it for the theatrical release. They added it for the television version. Like they went back. I don't know. A year later, like, hey Don, just sit in here. And tell them uh, you're all gonna die. You're all doomed. See, that's because the way I heard it was like uh, when um, Linda is getting choked with the phone cord. Yep. They they did two. One where she's her shirt's open and you might see a nip or titty, and then one where she's covered up completely because they were essentially planning planning for it for some TV. We're gonna, we're gonna need some family friendly takes of this shit, and so I'm surprised they didn't they didn't just do that uh, at the time. No, they didn't. They added it. They needed more. They needed more to put in there, and they wanted to add that scene for TV. And they went back and like added those scenes later. Um, and I think they used the the nude shot. They just crop the bottom part off. Hmm. This stretched out. Start seeing them. Yeah, it's the like it's, biz- it's bizarre. It is. Uh- when you go back and watch it, because. The, the anniversary ones all have, like, those scenes on it that you can go watch. And when you watch them, you're like, man, this is weird. But that's what I thought Halloween was. Um, I kind of want to go through the plot line by line on Wikipedia. Is that a bad idea? I don't think so. It's one of the greatest horror movies of all time. On Halloween night of 1963 in Haddonfield, Illinois, six-year-old Michael Myers, dressed in a clown costume and mask, Stabs his older sister Judith to death with a kitchen knife in their home. And that's the the opening with that that long shot where they do a couple cheats to make it seem like a true lo- one shot, and it, it it's fucking it's great. It's one of the, one of the first you know first person shots. It's not the first person you're gonna get into a big fucking nerd fight with people on the internet. Yeah, but it's it's one of the the first major ones, and. It was very effective because you're the first time you watched it, and it's hard because you've heard of the movie before you watched the movie. Do you think people knew, are we in the eyes of a little boy, or are we in the eyes of some weird pervert outside of this home? Because if you pay attention, the eye line, like it, it's clearly a short person. Yeah, yeah. If you, you, you definitely notice that. I would think it would be hard to think... That it's a normal sized person, but when you've but if you're a, if you're new and you've never seen this movie and you don't know the plot, you might not know. Hey, maybe this guy just sucks yeah. at like figuring yeah. out how tall people are. <laughs> yeah, you know, who knows? Yeah, and plus you're just like, where's Michael? And the boyfriend's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, go upstairs, baby, and I'll fuck you in point five seconds. That was high school. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'll call you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> It was great. Her boyfriend was like total scumbag. And she's brushing her hair like wishing that she felt something down there while he was doing his work. <laughs> she's still dry as Where fuck. are the cheats? Because I know there's the, there's a cut when he puts the mask on, right? That's Yeah, that's the only one okay. that I know for sure. Yeah. Because I remember Deborah Hill saying when they go upstairs, everyone's rushing around downstairs to set yeah, they, the lights they, up. Yeah, and I think they do a trade-off at the stairs, too. He's just like, take this fucking camera off of my shoulders yeah. because I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> the steady cam is all we've got for this whole movie, and it's heavy. Yeah. Fucking murder. Um, and he, uh, Michael, little Michael uh, k- kills Judith. She's like, Michael! Eh, mm-hmm. ooh. And you get real bad. <sighs> I mean, that part's not great. No, Deborah Hill's hand. Is it? That's scissors. fun. That's fun. I was wondering. Um, um, the um, knife. I mean, the knife. Yeah. So all that's her hand. I was wondering part four. about the, the little hands. Cool. Um, stab. He goes outside, and the parents are there. It's Michael, and he yeah. rips rips the mask off. Yeah, and it's, it's the big 80, reveal. It's ADR as fuck. 
Michael? It is. Michael. <laughs> You're like, that guy didn't open his mouth this whole time. I could just tell. He must have been really bad at his job because the little boy who that's his only fucking scene in the movie. Looks like he's on just, Quaaludes. Who looks like he's had all <laughs> of the drugs. Ooh. Um, apparently the, the dad, when he takes the mask off, like he was very forceful during those takes to get the mask off the boy's face. And it was he was like hurting the kid's ears. So not only was he so bad that like just ADR is lying, but apparently he's a bad hand actor too. Now, do you think that was ADR because they decided let's we got to put his name in there so people know who this is, so we set this up? Like you think maybe they after the fact? I'm guessing that whole thing they just planned it ahead of time to be ADR. You know, like what do we got? We got he's walking around the house. Boyfriend's yeah. like, yeah, I nutted, and then yeah, like, they, she's like. Yeah. Oh, we're not going to be able to get a boom. Like, where are we going to fit a guy doing sound into this shot? Yeah, all their focus was on the, this camera work that they were going to do. So, yeah, a lot of that. And, yeah, they probably threw the Michael uh, because, I guess, to let us know, like, really bring it home. It was the kid. Stupids. Yeah, and if, we're, if we got to we gotta be fair, Daniel Harris nails that way harder than this kid that's on Quaaludes. Yeah. He's just like, huh? Uh, My ears. (laughs) If you look, his ears are bleeding. That's not true. I don't think it is. That's not true. Uh, Jim, uh, how old is Michael Myers during his terror? 21. He is 21 years old. That's important. It's important. 15 years why is it important? It's important because uh, he's they have to move him, right? Because he's old. He's he's a not a minor anymore. Well, wouldn't that be eighteen? I thought that. I thought that. Interesting. Uh, Fifteen years later, on October thirtieth, nineteen seventy-eight, twenty-one-year-old Michael escapes from Warren County Smith Grove Sanitarium, stealing a car that was to take him to court. Returning home to Haddonfield, Michael kills a mechanic for his uniform and steals a white mask from a local store. So, yeah, this is where we, Which we, we finally see. see. Yes. We don't see that. We don't see him killing the truck, man. That part was always confusing as fuck to me for many years. Because you have this weird scene where Dr. Loomis is on the side of a road at a payphone. There's a fucking train. There, it's very, and it's very coincidental that he just so happened to pick this spot where Michael Myers decided to kill this guy and dump his body just feet away from this from this phone booth. I used to think that. But if you drive around in rural Illinois, there's only so many places to stop where that type of thing where there'd be a payphone or there'd be a place to dump a body and he was trying to track Michael down. So I think he's trying to like, well, this is the way he would have come, you know, that type of thing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it, you know, if you, if you go on the, if you're driving around enough, you get to those spots where it's like, well, this is the only spot to stop for like another hour, you know, when you're out yeah. in the middle of the country, nowhere, which is how they think of Illinois, apparently. Hey, well, they're close. Um, yeah, this is also the part where we get, we get the, some backstory. I, there's the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes, this boy, I've been his doctor for so long and just fucking drive the car. And, uh, Ellen, I love this nurse just smoking her fucking cigarette and Loomis goes to check the gate when all these, uh, loonies. patients are out. Mm-hmm. These loonies are out in the fucking field. She's like, oh, they let him out? Oh, I didn't know they let <laughs> What are they let him out for? <laughs> you fucking nurse, you're the worst at your job. I think she's trying to be humorous. Oh, they just oh. let him out to like hang out. This isn't right. Uh, she's great. She ends up being in Halloween H two O. Yes, she's also in part two, isn't she? I don't remember that, but that's good. Part yeah, trois. she's she's. I love her in H two O. She's the opening scene in that because Michael. She has like files and shit whereabouts of where. You know, Loomis is where Laurie Strode is, so she gets her fucking house burgled by Michael Myers, and uh, the third rock from the Sun Kid gets a fucking hockey skate in his fucking face, and it's great. It's a great opening to H2O, but she's good. It she is. has a lot of attitude. 
It is because you know, well, the beginning of H two O, he's uh, where was he for twenty years? Oh, where man. was he? Um, jeez, hmm. chilling. That's a weird time to pick to go find your files. Anyway, back to the huh. good one. He was in Thorn School. <laughs> he was at Thorn Ridge. Oh no. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. You got uh, me. Apparently, uh, when the loonies are outside and it's raining, that's fake rain. They got the little sprinkler thing, and it's just cold as fuck. Yep. Cold as fuck. And they told Nick that, Castle uh, it's not going to be cold. Yeah. They're like, uh, we don't have time to warm it up. Sorry, bud. So that had that, when you watch that scene, just know that is hell. That is hell. The following day, Halloween. The old wrench on the hand to break the glass. Oh. No. No. You didn't see that on the big screen? You could see it on the small screen if you know it's there. I saw saw nothing but palm. And then the window window breaks the way a car window would never break. (laughs) So you did see the wrench on the big screen. I didn't see the wrench. No? It looked like pure palm to me. No. Man, I'm gonna. Well, next year when oh, they no, do it again, you, I'm gonna. Now, I'll now that you know, you'll see it. You'll see it. He's like palming a wrench, so it'll break the glass when he hits it. But he's the, not supposed to be. It's supposed to look like his hand. Well, they they pull it off for the most part, unless you're an eagle-eyed viewer like Jim. Yeah, how obsessed with uh, Halloween. The following day, Halloween, Michael stalks high school student Lori Strode. After she and Tommy Doyle drop off a key at his former house so her father can sell it. Uh, this part was always weird to me. Spoilers. In 1995, that house is still for sale. And some dude just moves his family into there. He's an alcoholic. Sorry. Oh, boy. Um, I, I'm amused by this. And I sort of appreciate it, but it's strange. And it's a relationship and dialogue. And this is 100% Deborah Hill. I guarantee it. uh, Between Lori and Tommy. Because they talk like friends. Yeah. And not like babysitter child. Yeah. Uh, She's like, hey, Toots, what you up to? It's like, "Ah, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a jack-o'-lantern. Ah, that's cool. All right, see you later. Hot ass. Yeah. Like, it's, it's it's a very casual dialogue. Between a babysitter and a child. Hey, she said she could write teenage girls. She didn't say she could write children. She's like, I write everyone like teenagers. You can do the Luma stuff. Otherwise, it's going to be fucking silly. (laughs) Throughout the day, Lori notices Michael following her. But her friends Annie and Linda dismiss her concerns. Here's a scene that has always bugged me. And I get it. It's the phone scene. Um, she gets a phone call in Which her room. One? Oh, the first. Okay, I know. I got you. And she answers it, and there's nothing there. I think maybe like a little breathing. <sighs> and then she hangs up, and then it rings again, and it's Linda. Mm-hmm. She's just like, why the fuck did you hang up on me? Oh, that was you. What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. And she looks out the window, and this might be right before the phone call, but she looks out the window, and there's some sheets hanging, and there's Michael Myers, and she's like, what? She looks. She's looking at him. She's looking at him. She's looking at him. Michael Myers, right there. The camera goes back to Lori, who's still looking at him. Camera goes back to the sheets. He's fucking gone. Where? <laughs> she's looking at. I get it. If she looked away, looked back, he's gone. But she's she was always looking at those the sheets. The breeze uh, was hard. It was a hard breeze that day. Many sheets were in the way. You didn't. You couldn't see it. They were great sheets. <laughs> they blew. <laughs> the best. The best sheets, you couldn't see it, and then he was gone. Damn it, that scene's always bugged me. Because, like, she's just, like, yeah, that's fine. It's like, even if he did vanish during, you know, the, the shot that's on Laurie Strode, there needs to be a change of fucking expression. Like, where did he go? Where did he go? Where, he was just right there. She just keeps <laughs> looking like, yeah, he's gone. But at yeah. this point, they don't think this guy's a murderer. They think he's... Oh, he's, he's, look, he's checking you out, Laurie. Holy creep. Look at this creepy guy. Speed kills. Oh. I hate a guy with a car and no sense of humor. No sense of humor. You gotta say it right. No sense of humor. Totally. No sense of humor. 
I don't remember saying it's so bite with a biting edge. She says it weird. Who's that, Annie or Linda? Uh, Annie says the no. Because Annie, can Annie can do no wrong. Right. Annie, Annie is a goddess. Yeah, Linda just goes, "Give me a beer." Who? Linda's, like, Linda's like Judith's boyfriend. Judith's boyfriend in the beginning. See anything you like? Uh, Michael's child psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Loomis, arrives in Haddonfield to search for Michael. After finding that Judith Meyer's headstone has been stolen from the local cemetery, Loomis meets with Annie's father, Sheriff uh, Lee Brackett. Why do they right. do it? <sighs> that was I, I liked that character. It was a very interesting character. Yeah. The Grave Digger. The yeah. Grave Digger. Myers, Myers. I always loved how his... I always, like, finished his story in my head. Where I uh, here to sit down at the table where they proceeded to uh, oh yes r- r- right Myers yeah right here ah, ah and then I'm like what t- proceeded to what what did he do to his family yeah you know he just had dozens of them too yeah he's, dozens he was of probably murders. the guy that killed his family now this always I wouldn't say confused me I was just watching the movie wrong um for way too long maybe probably into my fucking twenties. Um, they show well, Ju- Myers, Myers. Oh, oh, why do they do it? And they show that the headstone is missing, and they show this big hole in the ground. I always thought, and it might have been a perspective issue. I always thought that was just like a, a dug up grave. I did the first few times too. I did as well. And I'm like, and then, if he then, digs yeah. up the whole grave. Why do we just get the headstone? Where's the rotted corpse? Yeah, yeah. And it, you, eventually your brain ties it together when you see the headstone later. And you go, oh, yeah. I'm just retarded. And they didn't film it that great. They weren't very clear with it. Gotcha, though. The two begin their search at Michael's house, where Loomis tells the sheriff about the danger Michael poses. Sheriff Brackett patrols the streets while Loomis waits and watches the house, hoping that Michael will return there. Now, I've seen this movie a lot. Jim, I know you've seen this movie a lot. It took me watching this in the theater on the big screen, 100% focused on the movie, to notice this motherfucker (laughs) stands outside this house for like eight... He'll be back. I'll just (laughs) chill right... I'll just chill right here. Yeah. For eight hours. Yeah, it goes from like light to dark. Like, at one point... You know, we get a lot of the babysitters getting killed, and they cut back to Loomis, and it's it's the Lonnie scene, and but they cut back to the dark bushes, and Loomis is there, and I almost started laughing. I was like, "This motherfucker's just standing outside." I'm sure he house. went and got a donut, took a piss, and came back or something. <laughs> hey, Lonnie, oh. I can't feel my legs. Can you help me up, <laughs> Lonnie? Get me a chair. <sighs> oh. Fuck, because he's got all these plans, and he knows this, he knows that, and what's his big idea? I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking stand. He's gonna chill at the Myers house. He doesn't wait inside to spring a trap. He's gonna hang outside by the bush. He's British. He doesn't. He's not familiar with the area. Oh my god! They flew him in for this one case because he's an expert. I like how the sheriff's like, "Yeah, I'll do it." So you shut the fuck up. Yeah, he always had the look that he has. Who is that? Charles Cipher. The look yeah. he has on his face all the time cracks me up from the time he's talking about the kids that probably robbed the hardware store to Loomis. You're telling me they're lined up for a slaughterhouse. The look he's got on his face is just always like, I don't give a fuck. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I got my daughter and her friends smoking pot right in front of me. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't smell it. Yeah, that part was uh, always weird to me. Because it took me a long time to realize that, that they were smoking marijuana in the car, Lori and Annie. Because it doesn't look like any marijuana that I've ever seen. And, like, the wrapper was all... The wrapper was strange. It was... Like, the width of it was strange. And it was probably legit, because John Carpenter was just, like, padding his pockets. Just, uh, here. Just use that. Yeah. Uh, I got one of... It got one of these. Use this. I sat on it a little, so just don't... And I do, I do like the very subtle message. Not that this movie has many of them; it's not trying to do that. But Lori's the the quintessential good girl. She's uh, the Girl Scout. And but what does she do? She still smokes a little weed. Yeah, she's human. Ain't no, ain't no big thing. 
she's, she's not, not she's not gonna That's go weed. she's not yeah she's not gonna go stab somebody and rob store for masks and rope no she's just gonna smoke a little weed and babysit these kids probably kids <laughs> you blame everything kids. on kids and he yells too <laughs> She is a hottie, though. She Damn. is amazing. Later that night, Lori goes over to babysit Tommy Doyle, who gets very annoying very quickly. <laughs> While Annie babysits Lindsay, Lindsay Wallace. Lindsay. And I never noticed, and I love this. Um, she just she just wants to watch this movie. She's just fucking captivated by these horror movies on the TV. Annie's getting stuck in windows and shit and this little girl's just like yeah that's yeah that's cool i'm watching this movie and i love that yeah she has to like call what is she (sighs) she's stuck in the window yeah and paul calls oh yeah 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 and then she goes yeah right then she goes out and her ass is stuck in the window hell yeah it is and her foot well her foot big 70s her her foot and i always wondered like just just back up yeah (laughs) just Go out the way you came in. What is? But if you know, see, and this is something I only noticed on the big screen. Her fucking foot is like Owen Harded in uh, like Big Blue when he fought <laughs> Brett. Like her foot is in some uh, like little table, and she needed like that's what Lindsay does. She unhooks her fucking foot, like when Yokozuna would get his leg stuck in the ropes. Yeah, and Brett Brett would just stomp the fucking piss out of him. <laughs> that's that's what happened here. Let um, it be I, known, I, I the that. first two Bret Hart references of the night, not by me. <laughs> um, and later on in these movies, well, I think I think just one more. Uh, we're gonna see Tommy Doyle, played by Paul Rudd, and yes. it's not great. Nope. I want. I I do appreciate when movies try to do that. They'll take a minor character and see what they're up to or if it's a child when they're growing up and that's what happens uh friday the 13th did it halloween does it i want to see Lindsay because i bet you she's out there making fucking movies because she loved watching those horror flicks yep and that would have been a fun little continuity that's all she wanted to do just sit back eat some popcorn watch some movies yeah she's got this dick scaring her and shit she's just trying to hang out so later that night, Lori's babysitting these kids, unaware that Michael is watching them. When Annie's boyfriend, Paul, calls her to come pick him up, she takes Lindsay over to the Doyle house to spend the night with Lori and Tommy. Annie is just about to leave in her car when Michael, who hid in the back seat, strangles her before slitting her throat, killing her. I forgot about the, the throat cutting. I remember the stabbing, mm-hmm. or the, the strangling, rather. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gives a little slash. He's just like, I gotta up this game. Yeah, we gotta know. We have to know that there's finality here, and that she's toast. Gotta can't leave, can't leave it up game. in the air. She can't be like that biker dude in Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. Just <laughs> pop up at the end, like, oh, I was just, just hanging out up here in the barn. <laughs> um. Yeah. Tommy sees Michael Myers a bunch during this, and he's just. Nobody believes him. Nobody believes me. We get those awesome shots where he's across the way. It's the best shot. You know, the exorcist fog in front of the house is an iconic shot. This one is is up is right up there, too. Now, what do you think the Nightmare on Elm Street iconic shot is, Jim? Uh, there's a... F- what do I think people think it is, or what do, what do I personally think it is? If you're putting like a museum together and you needed like one picture from each movie, like this is Halloween, and it would be that one. And if Exorcist, you would have that fog one. Here's Nightmare on Elm Street. Like it wouldn't it probably, wouldn't be Freddy probably in the, the alley. In the like, no, it'd be the glove in the crotch. That yes, the glove coming out of the bathtub. That what about Friday the Thirteenth? What do you think that iconic shot would be? The first one, Betsy Palmer one. Yeah, I mean, you could just go with the fucking mask. I would say if even but in that one, the, the iconic mo- shot the is like him jumping out of the water. I mean, it has to be because all of the other all the other murders are just like a hand. This is true. Yeah, it would be it would be a little Jason popping out of the water. 
Okay. And that's the big so, scare. <clears throat> yes, it movie. is. Linda and her boyfriend, Bob, arrive at the Wallace house after having sex. Uh, real quick, I would never noticed it. I love watching these, these movies again. Um, Bob was having some dick problems, Jim. <laughs> there's no way <laughs> that there's any insertion there. Is that what you're referring to? Well, like they're the like angle they're of doing... attack. No, not even the angle. Okay. Well, I actually thought the angle of attack was um, pretty good. You're saying what? He was too high. Too it low? looks like there's like his leg, her leg, his leg, her leg. Which <laughs> okay. No, I thought I saw clearly like I saw her knees spread. That's what... yeah. I think at one point we see it. But... Okay. Okay. But when it starts, and, oh, and she's just like, "What? What? Come on! What's wrong?" He's just like, "There's too many distractions. The phone's <laughs> ringing." <laughs> and then he, he's uh, probably the, sixteen beers into the night. Yeah, he's, he takes the phone off the hook, and suddenly he's got a, a fucking rock hard boner. <laughs> and they they start uh, going at it. A few moons later, they're done because that's what happens in movies when people have sex. Yeah, and I think that's what happened a lot in the seventies when dudes were like, "I don't care, I'm done." <laughs> let's see how, let's see how quickly I can be done. I'm done. <laughs> it's a game we've <laughs> us guys play. Call how soon can we be done? Yeah, and called called. It's all going in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna push it in. <laughs> I'm pushing rope, bitch. <laughs> After having sex, Bob goes downstairs to get a beer for Linda. But after Michael stabs him with a knife, pinning him to the wall and killing him, Michael then poses as Bob in a ghost costume and confronts Linda, who teases him to no effect. Um, and this is where Linda gets fucking killed. Um, this brings me back to they created the scares first. Yes. What are the scares in this movie? There's backseat. There's somebody in the car behind you in the backseat. You look out the window. There's somebody there, and then they're they they vanish. Somebody ahead by the the, the fucking bushes. The hedge, yep, hedge yep, bush. Someone pops out by the bushes. Now you're seeing yes. men in bushes. Yeah. There's people following you in cars. That's uh, a lot of paranoia. This this yeah. This motherfucker was just high on weed. <laughs> Here's this. It's like you see a guy across the street, in. and then he's gone. <laughs> You get in your car and there's a dude waiting for you in the back seat to put it because there's a hit out on you. There's uh, you think he's dead, but he's not. And then then John Carpenter said, "Yeah." And there's also you think he's dead, but he's not. And then there's just, now now you know he's dead and he's not. But he's but he's not. And he <laughs> they fell, really and he like fell that in one. the sand for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, they live on the beach in Illinois. Um, boom, 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 beer kills, uh, Linda. And that death wasn't, that death was fine. I thought that death was fine. Just strangles her with the phone cord. Just, he, he strangles her. Uh, meanwhile, Loomis discovers the car Michael stole and begins combing the streets. This motherfucker standing outside this house for eight hours looks to his left. <laughs> <laughs> he finally hey, decides, I recognize that car. I was just in it. <laughs> now here's the thing if your plan is to hang outside this house because Michael Myers might come back maybe you should look at the sidewalk every now and then to see if he's coming oh, I bet he got in that he, got, he still has the keys he got in that car went and got some cigarettes came back and was like wait a minute I didn't drive here <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> Now, uh, and here's a bit of a continuity error. They show Michael Myers pretty much parking one house away from uh, the Wallaces. He parks, he gets out, and he hides behind a tree. We watch the actual Wallaces leave their house. All right, babysit our kids. We're going to go to the fuck. Um, but, apparent, but he sees the car, you know, right there across the street from the Myers place. Mm-hmm. That just, that dog doesn't hunt. He Doesn't moved it. Up. <laughs> he moved it. He went to Burger King. He got bored waiting for Lori to come across <laughs> the street. He went and got some onion rings and came back. 
He's like, if I'm going to be dragging these bodies, I'm going to need fuel. We got this he- this headstone was heavy as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a slight bit of... Uh, we, we are to presume a little bit of supernaturalness going on. From him. Yeah. Not the how, goddamn how wagon. How the fuck do you get a tombstone like that all the way up the stairs by yourself? That's um, heavy as shit. Yeah, like he had. I mean, he's super strong. They show he's strong. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I mean, like that—that's. It's not. It's not just a dude. You know, they 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 give us clues to let us know he's not just a dude. Um, was it the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes? Yes, the blackest eyes. I mean, I'm glad they didn't go too far with the devil stuff. Like he's the devil, or he's the son of the devil. He's a demon. Yeah. they didn't go that far. They just said that boy ain't right. Yeah, I I got the impression it was just sort of a turn of phrase. Yeah. You know, the devil's eyes, you know, there's just something not right about him. No. Yeah. Becoming suspicious, Lori goes over to the Wallace house where she finds her friend's bodies in an upstairs bedroom as well as Judith Meyer's headstone. I I know I was always it was real nice placement. Like, was he just fucking standing there like, yeah, that looks that looks good? <laughs> like, this looks nice. Yeah. She's spread out. It's very symmetrical. Got it just I've, right. I've nailed it. She's blonde. Judith was blonde. There's titties. There's titties. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll just put the other one in the closet. Yeah. I'm going to hang him by the legs so she can swing like a child at the monkey bars. Um, or is that Paul? I don't remember. As a horrified Lori cowers in the hallway, Michael suddenly appears and attacks Lori. That part was scary. That scene as shit. is awesome. And the lighting on it is perfect. When, cause he just appears yeah. slowly. F- fades in. He almost fades in. Yeah. There's no jump scare there. Like, ah, here I am. I got a knife. That's yeah. just a oh god! It's such an awesome shot. I love that. That's shot. the I think that's the exact opposite of a jump scare. Where a jump scare is immediate, this one it's almost like a transition. It's slowly happening because you see blackness, then you see a little gray, and you're like, "Is that a face? That's definitely a face." He's right behind her. Mm-hmm. Fuck! It's very good. And how is she going to get out of this one? He's just a bad shot with a knife. Yeah, he get, he gets her arm. Uh, he attacks Lori, causing her to fall down the stairs. Breaks her ankle or sprains it, something. Slows her down, and we, you know, we get her running away. And she does the. I'd love to see the history of this, the history of uh, victims in horror films tripping and falling. This might have been one of the first ones because she falls. But guess what, people? It makes sense. People were laughing in the theater. I heard somebody say, "Why do they always fall?" Because <laughs> she just broke her fucking ankle. Yeah, stupid. She, she fell down the stairs. <laughs> she didn't like roll down them. She just like fell down them from the top. She was like, "Oh, my huge tits weighed me down. I fell." No, no, her ankle's but, broken, and she's running across the street in like seventies shoes. Nonetheless, she doesn't Lori have like races. sneakers on. Right. Um, she goes back to the Doyle house. But before she does that, she does the smart thing, which you have to at least address. And I love that they took the time. She help me, help me. And she goes to, I think, maybe in the next house over. The neighbors. And she's, yeah. the neighbors, help me, help me. And they turn the light on. All right, that's good. That's a good thing, the audience says. Oh, they're in the blinds now. They've opened the blinds. She says, help me, help me. I see you over there. Somebody's trying to kill me. And they just fucking wave her off, mm-hmm. close the blinds, it's Halloween. hit the porch light. It's Halloween, Dale. It's all part mm-hmm. of the psychology. And she knows. She's like, fuck. Uh, and she keeps running off. And she knows she has to go back to a place she does know she can probably get into. And that's the Doyle's house. Um, which barely. But them barely jeans gets are in. so tight. Yes. The mom jeans. We're super tight. Uh, Michael gets in and attacks her again, but Lori manages to fend him off long enough for Tommy and Lindsay to escape. Well, let's talk about this. So she gets in, shuts the door, locks the door. Uh, She talks to the kids, locks them upstairs. Yep, go upstairs. But then we see the window is open. So we know. The the curtain's blowing. He's in there somewhere, and you lock the door. And it didn't do a goddamn thing. 
and she kind of just drops down by the couch in front of the couch and he appears behind the couch and rah, I think he takes he takes another swing um, but, but before that she ducks at the couch and she's crying she's super scared and her ankle's broken and she uh, and they established this earlier that she's got these uh her yarn and her knitting needles mm-hmm. she grabs her knitting needle and so when fucking Michael pops up and rah, she says no I hurrah to you Hurrah! And I think she gets him right in the fucking uh, throat. Yeah, she hits him in the neck. Right in the neck. And he goes down, though. Yeah. Like a bitch. Like, yeah. It, it's, that's not some, unless you hit someone's jugular and they, like, bleed out and die, that's not something that's going to. It's not a kill shot. No. But that's, I get it. You got to yeah. slow him down and, and then build this up that he's unstoppable. Yeah. Um, and she does. Um, Something she does a few more times, which I wish they would have found better ways to do it. Uh, she drops the the knitting needle mm-hmm. and the knife. She says she holds the knife. She's like, look at the size of this goddamn knife. And then she drops it, it in disgust. She drops it and she goes to check on the kids upstairs. She says, all right, kids, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's the boogeyman. Says, no, God damn it. So fucking boogeyman. He's like, you mean you can't stop the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, he's right fucking behind yeah. you, bitch. <laughs> and uh, it is. He, he's. Uh, you can see his shadow as he uh, climbs the stairs, which is great. It's very great. And how does that? How does that work? How does she get those kids down? Because he's like blocking the path. Um, I'm trying to remember how that worked. She doesn't. Yet, yeah. he strangles okay. her. He tries to. So I guess strangling means you finish the job. He starts choking her. She pulls the mask off. Uh, and then she goes into the bedroom. Like they don't go downstairs yet. They go downstairs after the closet. closet. Yeah, after the closet, she stabs him with the knife. He falls down. That's when she goes. Why don't you go downstairs and go to the Mackenzie's house and you know? And then they. <laughs> Then yeah. they go down the stairs. Now, and here's the thing. I know she's terrified, so your logic is always going to be, you know, not top notch. Um, she delays them. The kids hide. She goes into to the room, closes the door. She opens the window. Yeah. Like, haha, he's going to see the open window. He will think I have escaped, and then he will leave, and then I will actually leave for real. But meanwhile, I will hide in the closet. And she does that, and we get the iconic scene where he's smashing the closet. But when she goes to hide in the closet, she's she's not quiet. Like she's crying. Yeah, she's she's whimpering, you know, all that stuff. So that plan, I think it was just to open the window for the finale. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's a good setup. I guess he he always could have crashed through it though too. Oh yeah. Um, no, nah, they, they they didn't do good window stuff in this movie. The, no more windows true. for them. Um, yeah, she's crying. She's upset. I mean, it, who knows what I would do in that scenario? I'd like to think I'd be quiet, but maybe I couldn't be. Yeah, but this is another time he smashes the closet and she takes a hanger, bends it, Jeff stabs him in the fucking eye. Fucking eye. Um, and he goes down again. He's like a fainting goat. Oof. Well, no. <laughs> it just goes down. No, no, she she jabs him in the eye, drops the knife. She stabs him with the knife in the chest. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, she drives it at him. And that's when we know he's dead. Yeah. We're not um, supposed and, to and, think he's dead yet. And and she um she does drop she does drop it though. Again. That would have been one you know it would have been acceptable to not have that knife in your hands if it's stuck in his goddamn chest. Right. Um but yeah, he he's there and she says go to the McKenzie's. And meanwhile, I'm just going to kind of sit here and cry um and that's where we get the the infamous uh, undertaker mm. uh, sit up because he made it famous not michael myers yeah right uh-huh <clears throat> yeah we get that that shot and it's it's would you say that's the most iconic shot in the movie i mean besides that uh, the other one in front of the house yeah but the as one far in front as of the actual, house is sort of like picturesque but i mean like picture, a scene yeah. where things are moving yeah yeah, with the cinema, um, yeah, and then we get the we get the chi- the chickens are back, dun, 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 dun. Um, and they do something 
fantastic. Most of it, um, we see the sit up. This is all we're watching Lori in the foreground and Michael's in the background. And we watch him sit up. We watch him kind of stand up. And he just starts making his way towards her when, what do we get? Uh, a cut. And because she's now entering the hallway. Mm-hmm. And now, that like, that's great. Because now we can't see how far is he, how close is she, is she going right. to make it down the stairs. We've opened up all these other options. And, and even though we know what's happening, we've, we've created more dread. Yeah, we um, don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. And we, we, we get them uh, going at it there. <laughs> and then Dr. Loomis, uh, I don't know how he has the strength in his legs, Jim. <laughs> He's doing wall sits outside against the Myers house all day. He's hurdling up every other step to get up these these goddamn stairs because he sees the kids running. So he's like, yeah, "Oh, he's probably in that house." <laughs> She's like, "I want you to go go downstairs, go to the Mackenzie's house." They just run out of that house, <laughs> fucking screaming, <laughs> fucking opposite ways. It's <laughs> like, well, one of them listen. Um, Don't yeah, he hurdles him. he hurdles the steps. Um, she pulls off the, the the mask, and we momentarily see his, his face. We That's, see Tony that- Moran for one shot. Mm-hmm. His eyes just a little fucked up from the the hanger. You go right back to Nick Castle. Yep. And then um, Doctor Sam Luma shoots him. Uh, how many times? Well, I swear it's not six. I want to say it's like seven. He says six, and I, if that's what you were, I, maybe you were baiting me into that joke. Shot him six times. I shot him six times. I shot him in the heart. But I swear, if you watch it. It's like not six shots. It's like seven or something, eight. I was counting in the theater. Yeah. Because of the joke. Yeah. He shoots him six times. Hmm. Now, if you dispute this, I mean, if I'm sure there's a hundred clips on YouTube at the end of Halloween, but I'm, I'm literally with my fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And there's six, and boom, that last one right out the goddamn window. He does the high spot. He does. He does the high spot. Save it for the end, brother. And yeah, a nice thud and a very cool callback to all the boogeyman nonsense. Was that the boogeyman? It was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was. And th- this scene uh, is great because he goes to the window, and of course Michael Myers isn't there. And I'm sure you heard the story where Donald Pleasance said to John Carpenter, "All right, bud, I can do this two ways." I can look out this window and I could be shocked or I can look out this window and give that look like I knew this was going to fucking happen. And John Carpenter, which every director should do, said, why don't you give me both? Then I'll <laughs> see which one plays better. Yeah. And this one played better. Yeah, he's uh, he's no dummy. He is no dummy. He knows. The only the, the, the main reason I remember that it's sand... Is because yeah. in Halloween 2, it's grass. Like, they go outside, and he's, like, looking around, and he's like, he was right here. I'm like, that's grass. That's all grass. There's not a, a bit f- of sand anywhere. <laughs> it's a foot of grass. Yeah, the two movies are intertwined for me pretty hard because um, I'd seen Halloween 2 first before I'd seen Halloween 1. Because it was on, it just happened to be on TV. I, I set the v- VCR to record, and then you get the end of one, and the beginning of two, you know that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, even in that, he falls into sand, and they walk out on the grass. Makes sense. I mean, it should be grass. It should have been grass should, the first time. Is what we're it getting. Should. At. So was it sand for the bump? I don't or was it know. sand because it was California? Was I it think- sand? I think it's probably sand because it's California. Not a lot of lush green lawns out there, maybe. Or it could have been a fucking escape from New York. Like, I shot that scene in my backyard. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I had to shoot this in my garage one night. Yeah. Who knows? So, So that's Halloween. John Carpenter's Halloween. 1978. And in what window do you, does it feel like he falls out of? In at the end of the first one, I mean, it. I feel you're setting me up for something. It's I mean, not it's a setup. Second, it's not a. I'm not like. I mean, I'm not like. Ha ha! But I just, I just want to see if you feel the way I feel. 
Um, I'm gonna say it feels and looks like a, a second second story window. Yeah, but like, what do you think he falls into the front yard or the backyard? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I always felt like he fell out of like into the backyard. The way it's sort of lit when that shot when he's down there, like you know, there's not it doesn't look like there's street lights everywhere. Yeah, I, I like the side of the house. Yeah, not not in the, the front side. yard, and then yeah, but, not in the front. But actually, he falls into the front yard. Because that's where he's like, oh, he was right here. There's blood. Yeah. Never really noticed that. You'd have to watch Halloween, too. Which I know you have, but I mean, like, that's that's when you, you're you like, wait a minute. He fell into the front yard? What the fuck? There's grass? Yeah. There's, There's blood in the grass? Him. I shot him in the heart! There's also that part in part two that I don't really like. And now we're doing Halloween 2. 1979, John, not John Carpenter's Halloween 2, um, where it opens and it's a continuation, and Michael Myers is in the alley, and down the alley at the end of it is Dr. Sam Loomis, and there's the cop car, and he's talking to the cop, and Loomis is freaking the fuck out. And meanwhile, we got that uh, first-person perspective of Michael Myers, and he's being a real bitch. He's like, ooh, let me hide behind, ooh, almost got caught there. Yep. Let me hide behind this. It's like, no. Well, it was a four, it was a four badge alert at that point. <laughs> like, if he, like, uh, like he should have just, like, crossed. Looking that way, like, all right, Loomis is over there, cop over here, I'm moving left to right. Just on the, sign, the signs alien cross, <laughs> just walk right across. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, I never liked how he was just a like, cautious little Sally, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's hurt, though. <laughs> Get yeah, shot six hurt. times, and why? Why does his jumpsuit look green in this one? In part yeah. two, what the fuck happened? Oh, you shot him so is... many times. I turned your jumpsuit green. Yeah, so things have changed. Um, this is the part where I announce that next week we are going to be discussing Halloween two. Are we really? We are really. That's awesome. So just like the film is the kind. Uh, continuation of one uh, so are these podcast episodes so we will see you next week with halloween 2 uh any plugs or anything before we get out of here jim not from me uh i do have one plug uh unknown wizards battlegrounds is oh available on dmsguild.com it is a DD adventure if you are a dungeon master um, we'll have the link on characterworkpodcast.com it's a D&D one-shot adventure inspired by Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. This is a video game that we play a lot. Um, I will so say you... I've played this adventure personally. I've played it. It is fucking awesome. If you very good time. Even if you don't like if you haven't played PUBG, give this a shot. If you have played PUBG, it's amazing. It's everything you would hope it would be. There you go. I'm going to put that right there on the box. Um, so that's available for for $1. That's what the price tag is on that. That link will be on characterworkpodcast.com. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next week for Halloween 2. This was episode 43, John Carpenter's Halloween. Thanks for listening. I'm getting a beer. I'm probably kids. <laughs>